Well, you know what they say, it's not the size of the deck, it's how you use it. Yep. Welcome back to the Lazy A-Hole Ranch, everyone. My name is Allie, and this week I've tagged along with Mike, who is repairing a deck in the area. I'll be sending the ladies unsolicited deck pics later. It's raining today, so we're kind of getting a plan of attack. Well, now it's stopped. <laughs> Stupid weather. Gosh, they have such a beautiful view, though. So, this is the deck in question that we're going to be working on today. Our first step was to make an assessment of what steps we needed to take to turn this sad floppy deck into a nice solid strong deck for the homeowner. Big timber that runs around the outside, it looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, I think this kind of stuff will replace that. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the stuff that's up close to this exterior wall is probably pretty okay for the most part. Yeah, that stuff looks fine. Yeah, because it's sheltered a little. This will keep us busy for a few days. We have a foot of snow coming this weekend, so most likely we'll get this done a little bit today and some next week. The first couple of days on the project were a little chaotic. Both Mike and I are very independent, so we typically just dive into projects with our own ideas on what to do. Sometimes we just dive in before discussing a plan of action. Someone had made a temporary repair to this deck, but it had some weird gaps that added to the sketchiness, along with so many boards that were barely attached. Walking around on this thing was was a little interesting. There are other joists next to these ones that kind of look awful and they were put in place to basically replace those other joists. Once we managed to get on the same page, things started to go a little more smoothly. I think this first day was really more about discovering what exactly needed to be done to this deck to make it much safer for the homeowners. I think we'll definitely have to replace some of these joists. They just all spin. I think we'll put an overlap on that one. As we began replacing some of the previously patched sections, some things became very apparent. The first was that demoing this thing was going to be a big pain in the deck. None of the screws wanted to come out and no drill bit on earth would penetrate the screw heads. So Mike found a creative solution that we'll cover a little bit later. We also quickly realized that the joists were worse off than we thought. So we needed to go below and start from the bottom up. solid. Well, there's that clean joist right next to it. Yeah, that one's getting ripped out. That's what we call dry rot. I think on the next trip, we'll bring a piece into sister to this one. Okay. So I think it's going to be marginal most of the way out. If we are going to be sistering these floor joists because they're not doing so great. Do we need to think about our offset? Yeah. So we should actually probably go down there and see how many need to be replaced and get that started first. Yeah, the way we'll have to put them in will be a little weird because normally you put in the hanger and you drop the joist in and fasten it to the hanger. So instead, I'm assuming we'll have to Fasten the hanger to the joist. Yeah, then stuff it up where it needs to be. And we have to figure out which ones up here need to be replaced. Because as we're getting into this, we're finding a lot of rotted wood. What a good dog. Oh, Apparently, she's one of those once you pet her, you're buddies for life. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, baby. I think the ones on that section are probably okay. They don't look 
as weathered. Man, they look pretty rough to me. There's that spot, there's that screw that missed. Just to the right of that, it's yeah. kind of coming apart. And some of them are okay, like out to here, and then it just goes to crap. We finished up that day with a list of things to pick up so we could go full steam ahead once we got past our next winter storm. Winter storm? In May? Here in Colorado, we get snow through the end of May and sometimes into June. At the higher elevations, it's not unheard of to get snow in July. Our one day of snow turned into almost a week of snow, and we ended up somewhere between a foot and a half to two feet of snow. Bob the Builder said he got between two to three feet of snow at his house. 18 inches of snow? <sighs> I'm grilling anyway. Mike got this nifty little bit for the drill called a plug cutter. We're gonna use that and um, cut holes around the screws so we can just pull the boards off and make it go a lot faster. Because these screws don't wanna come out at all. Improvise, right? We're gonna use a screw extractor. Oh, All the way. We're gonna go ahead and reuse all the boards that are sturdy. So I'm saving these and setting them aside, and I'm taking out the second row and getting rid of the scrap. Of course, me, not knowing tools very well, managed to ruin the heat treat on the plug cutter almost immediately. We did get another one, but Mike managed to sharpen this one and it worked just fine. But hey, I learned my lesson. I find that I'm always having to make amends for shortcomings. You still have to be able to get a hammer up in there to beat the nails in. So at the edge of the board, there. Yeah, that's not doable. You can go 16 to this one and then go back to 24. Okay. From that, because that'll give us room to swing a hammer and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. How was that gonna mess with stagger though? Yeah, we should probably have to split the difference and just gonna make it work. Shite quarter inch. Ah, we just missed that. Trying to make my way knocking on every door in this maze. The times it's all out of reach. Soldier on. When it's harder to learn than to teach. Soldier on. I do 
<laughs> That's see that sounds okay-ish. That's kind of dull. Okay. That one might be okay. After a quick lesson on ways to tell if a joist is rotten, we got an accurate count of how many more boards were needed to give some proper support for this old deck. It sure felt like we were moving in slow motion, but once we decided on a plan of attack, things moved along much more quickly with us finishing a fair portion of the joist and moving to the top half of the deck. We got about three quarters of the way through the project over the next few days until I triggered a migraine working under the deck. After that, we were sick for over three weeks and I'm still dealing with the headaches. So it turns out I'm really good at demoing things that I don't want to demo, but I'm really bad at demoing things that I want to destroy. <laughs> Keep me away from everything you care about. Now that we got most of the joists done, it's time to come up here and start laying these boards out. Do we want to replace this yeah, board. I think so. So start here? Yeah, I'm thinking... Uh, just go to this. Edge. Yeah, wherever they fall out there, we'll just go to that. Because there's going to be some cut work anyway, just to hit the, the clean joists. Today is going to be the big day of, oh wow, something happened. Yeah, get most of it knocked out anyway, because the uh, table saw will be involved on uh, probably this row. When hummingbirds attack. Hummingbird NATO. Oh. <laughs> Throw me that Torx bit and I'll buzz out some of this other crap. Stick the plug cutter up here so it doesn't grow legs. I'm sorry for the times I forget what it was like living life like a silhouette. Tracing the line and ignore what's inside till you came into my life. Yeah, I'm so glad that we uh, put a floor joist here and a floor joist here because that is gone. Sometimes I see it all so clear. You are the reason I. I was in the dark, but you were the light Guiding me through this night Guiding me through this night 
So since we have some staggering weirdness because we kept one or two floor joists, I'm going to cut a piece to attach to the floor joists so that we can screw stuff into. So that's what I'm doing now. Having my head between the joists and the deck is uh, how I gave myself a migraine last time. So I think I'm gonna go down the ladder now. I keep my head up towards the sky and look for you like a satellite. When things go wrong and I'm out of touch, you always find a way to send me love. So I ran mine in straight up and down and I'm noticing that you're doing yours on an angle. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. It just gives the threads a little bit more to grab on the way through the fibers. It's more critical in, uh, in green. There's, there's some I've noticed where it kind of, it goes all the way to the end and then it kicks over like a half inch. Like the whole end of the board is like out. Yeah. It's weird. I want to say it's Snape. Does it just does it just kick when they get to the end of the board? Is that what's doing it? Yeah. Normally you try to flatten stuff out, like on a planer or something. You flatten it out a little long and then cut the ends off because you know, depending on the planer, the outside two inches or so are going to be a little goofy. Good before and after. Before. After. Before. After. Whoa! There. The birds have made it very clear how they feel about this section of the deck. Because this one was pretty wrecked and there's a chunk missing and yeah I think the rest of it might be all right so we'll just cut a piece to drop in there and send that on its way so let's figure on that our stagger is carried properly yeah there's gonna be some just kind of splitting the difference on most of this because getting it to follow the contour of all this would be mm, yeah well, I guess it's not as horribly uneven as I thought it was mostly. yeah hey Mike hand me the triangle um, actually, it's a speech square. Well, realistically, I'm just going to set the fence at four and three quarters and stuff it through. <laughs> Anywho. Positive. Too bad you're not typo negative. <laughs> I'm gonna go shove the stuff in from underneath and be done with that part. Yeah, because then we're down to one, two, three, four. We're sneaking up on it. So this is how you make weird cuts so i mapped out um points on the length of the board and the width that is at those points so i'll just chart that out oh, 24 inches and I'm four and a half wide I'm just using the measurements on the speed square 49 inches and five and 81 and five and a half which yeah we wonder so that's fine 
get get the triangle, baby. Get the triangle. 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 I think it took us seven working days total to turn this sad deck into a usable space again. But because of weather, illness, side quests, and life, it ended up taking us a little over a month to get the entire project done. For some reason over the last few years, June has been this black hole for productivity. There's not much we can do about it except go with the flow and just trust that we are on the right path. These little obstacles of life sure are a pain in the moment, but in my experience, there's a moment ahead of us where we will see the timing, why it had to go sideways, and we'll be grateful for the experience. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Next week, we'll be replacing the hydraulic pump on the backhoe, again. If you want to check out the history with the backhoe, check out this video here. I love you all the way to the moon and back, and I want you to have an amazing week. Bye!